was not a rebel. I was not an angry man, but Islam made me an angry man. Islam made me do this all what I'm doing today. I was happy in my country. I simply wanted to live with my wife there, but Islam made me leave my country. Islam made me lose my family. And because of Islam, actually, I simply decided to expose Islam in, edu in an educated way, giving the references of Quran and Hadith. Mr. Imran Firasat is a Pakistani who converted from Islam to Christianity. Spain granted him asylum in 2004 because, as an apostate, his life was at risk. The Spanish authorities are now threatening to deport him to Pakistan under hate speech laws mandated by the European Commission. I was told that I'm Muslim and I have to follow that religion. I followed Islam 26 years of my life before I left it. So, uh, honestly, I never understood actually what Islam is. We are forced to pray, to read Quran, and uh, to, to recite everything in Arabic. So actually we do not understand what we are speaking, what, how, the way we are uh, praying to God. We don't understand anything of that. So, you know, there is no connection with God. There is no relation with God. Uh, we just do it because we are forced to do it. In Islam, it's not allowed to ask questions or to doubt. They just, simply, they just say that uh, if you ask questions or if you're doubting about your faith, that is blasphemy. So we all are afraid there to ask questions or to doubt. I met my wife, she was a Buddhist, she was from Indonesia, we met in Pakistan and um, I fell in love with her and I wanted to marry with her legally and having a family with her. But later I realized that Islam doesn't allow a Muslim to marry with a Buddhist. So it was not possible in any way that uh, we can marry. We decided to live together without uh, being married. I thought there are many couples in the world who live actually together without being married or without having a paper in their hands. So for me, important was to be with her because I love her and she loved me. Problems started when, I, when we had a son. The hospital asked us for the marriage certificate. We couldn't provide that and then they reported to the police and then um, police arrived to our home. They come in a huge group and they just torture you. Uh, so no one can actually blame who was actually uh, the person who tortured you. They took us to police station. We were detained there for several days. And uh, there actually, uh, um, I was very sad that um, my own Pakistanis, my patriots, they, they, it's difficult to say actually, but they, my wife was raped there uh, by the police and my thumb was amputated by them. They said, okay, there will be one condition that you can be freed, that if your wife leaves Pakistan, she cannot leave here, or otherwise she has to convert to Islam. I had to leave my country, my house, my job, my family, my friends, everything, because of Sharia law, because of Islam. I, I really thought that life is uh, finished now. I may kill myself, or maybe they will actually kill us. So I was just uh, completely lost what's happening with us. But my son, my little son, he was a hope, and uh, we had to be alive for him. We came to Spain, I was very not happy, because, because what happened with me in Pakistan, with my family, it was not easy to forget all that, and uh, to start a new life in a new country where you don't know the language, where you don't have um, the legal status, not even friends. So, but at least I was very happy about the safety of my family in Spain, that we are at least safe here and uh, people are welcoming and uh, they are supporting our case. I was simply angry with Islam. I decided to expose it as much as I can. I, I started writing in newspapers, uh, giving interviews in TV, radios. Sigo manteniendo mi afirmación que el Islam es un peligro para la sociedad y que tenemos que luchar contra ello, porque todo el jihad terrorismo viene del Islam. That was a mission of my life, that I have to speak about Islam and I have to um, encourage other people like me who are suffering actually in Pakistan or in India or in any other Islamic country that they also should raise voice against the injustices of Islam. When I uh, criticize Islam, then uh, of course uh, Muslims were angry because we have to understand one thing that Islam is not a tolerant religion. One day I was physically attacked by Muslims. Uh, my criticism on Islam has gone on a very high level because my articles were in national media of Spain and I decided to leave Spain for a while and then come back later when the things will be calmed. And I promised to my wife that I will not write about Islam anymore. 
we went to Indonesia. All what I knew is that Indonesia is a modern country. It's uh, close by to Australia, Singapore. So it looked like to me uh, that it will be a modern country. But on the other hand, the fact that Indonesia has the biggest Islamic population on the earth, I was not aware of that. Because of Islam, I left my country. Because of Islam, I became a rebel. Because of Islam, I was an atheist. I couldn't stop myself from writing again. So I tried to hide my name as much as I uh, could because I knew that I'm living in an Islamic country and I'm speaking about Islam, that was a huge risk for me. So I, I continued uh, doing those things, making blogs, writing as much as I could about Islam. But one day, uh, through my IP address, while I was sending some mails, I was caught uh, by the police. They came to my home and they took me to the police station. I was caught in Indonesia for blasphemy and uh, they wanted to charge me for that. But uh, finally, we could uh, reach an agreement that they, that they just deport me from there. And uh, they deported me from Indonesia. I arrived back to Spain. I couldn't bring my family because I had to pay them a lot of money, which I had there. Um, and I told my wife and my children that be patient and as soon as I go back to Spain, I'll work and bring you back to Spain. And they were sad, but, uh, but they were agree with that because they knew we had no other way. When I arrived back to Spain, uh, I was working here uh, in a restaurant. I was earning money. I was talking to my family every day. But suddenly, uh, one day I was uh, arrested by the police. And uh, they, they said that, uh, you know, why, why we have arrested you? I said, no, I don't know. They said that Indonesia has issued a warrant against you, that you are accused of uh, a murder crime. And uh, they took me to the prison. I was completely shocked, surprised, what's happening? Because they deported me by themselves, and now they're accusing me of a murder. But luckily, uh, I could actually prove my innocence to the uh, Spanish High Court. I proved them that I was deported by themselves, and I was not involved in any kind of that crime. I was acquitted. I have nothing on my name. It is very important to say that converting to another religion and accepting uh, someone an invisible, invisible power as God. It's not an easy thing or easy process which just uh, takes some days. It takes a long time and uh, many, some kind of miracles, you know. I was not that unfamiliar with Christianity. I had Christian friends. I used to debate sometimes with them. I used to ask them questions. So I had a lot of knowledge about Christianity, but I never had that feeling that I want to be Christian or I never had that faith. My wife was in Indonesia. So one day she told me on telephone that uh, she has, she wants to become Christian. She wants to be baptized. And I was actually not happy and not even sad. I said, okay, that's your decision if you want to be so. Actually, she, her, her sister and her sister-in-law, they were converted to Christianity. Uh, so she became Christian and I was okay with that uh, because she's an individual. And then later, um, there were two more things which happened in my life, which actually changed me completely. First was uh, that one day I was, uh, I knew that my children, they go to church with my wife. And uh, I always used to ask them, did you go to church today? They said, yeah. I said, what did you pray? They said, I prayed to God that I can become, I can uh, be reunited with Papa and I can, uh, I can play with Papa. So that was, those were emotional words from my children. One day I asked to my daughter, so who is God? And you know, she did like this, her hands, and she closed her eyes like she's praying, and she said, God is Jesus. That, that was something just touched my heart. I can't explain um, what was that feeling, what did I feel in that moment, but, but I, heard, I, I felt something, even my little daughter has a God, and I don't have a God. I don't believe in anyone. So my daughter's faith actually brought me to the faith. When I was in prison, then uh, there was a priest inside of the, uh, uh, he used to come to the prison. Uh, there was a church inside of prison. So he used to invite me. First few times I didn't go there, but later I went there to see them. And uh, I liked the way actually they prayed. I liked the way that they had no inst uh, 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 restrictions while praying. And they were, you know, enjoying with the music, praying to God in any word they can. And uh, there was no restriction like Islam that you have to say the exact words or you have to do like this or you have to do like that. It was just like a free way to pray God and uh, the way they were praying to God. And uh, those all things I really liked very much. And that was the moment of my life when I was really suffering. I was far from my family. I didn't know how to start on again the life. I was compelled to believe again in, in God. I always knew. 
I knew that there is a God. When I was released, I went to a church and I, I said to God, I, first time I think I cried as truly from my heart. I never actually prayed with a direct connection to God when I was a Muslim. But when I was released from prison, I went to a church and I truly cried from my heart. And I said to God, if you are really God, if you are the one to who people say that you're God, then please help me. Take me out of this situation, make me meet with my family, and I surrender myself to you. That was the day, I think, uh, first time I had a connection with God. I surrendered myself. I, I, um, I embraced Christianity from my heart, even though I was not baptized at that moment. And uh, since I made that confession to God and I, I, I embraced the Christianity, there were changes in my life. There were drastic changes in my life, and I realized those changes. I saw that things are happening which were before difficult. There is someone who is protecting me. There is someone who is actually helping me. That actually made me made my belief more strong that, yes, since I accepted Christ as God, then life is changing. Imran has been very faithful. If I would have to describe one of the key elements, it would be faithfulness, endurance, <laughs> perseverance, all those words. He's been very, very good. At in his walk with Christ and to our church? I think I became more educated. The, uh, the, I changed my way in a in more polite way, the way I could educate Muslims. So with that purpose, I produced a film actually on Islam and I released that. And I released that by informing to the government that look, I'm going to make a film with the purpose to educate Muslims. I want to show them the real life of Muhammad. Mere days after this film was released on YouTube, Imran Firasat had his refugee status in Spain struck down. The Spanish government wanted to deport him back to Pakistan, where he would surely be killed. He had been an advocate against the, uh, or trying to, excuse me, educate the public on the encroaching uh, threat of Islam and Islamists uh, across Europe and particularly across Spain. He's talked about how uh, Islamist immigrants need to uh, become Europeans, not to uh, co not to just simply come to Europe and practice Islam and, and invoke Sharia law. He's talked about the violence across uh, the Asia, across uh, Europe, and across even uh, the United States against uh, Christian converts. I didn't violate any law of Spain. I just uh, exercised my right to freedom of expression, and I produced a film. Just because of that, the Spanish government revoked my status, and they wanted to deport me back to Pakistan. And uh, the reason they revoked my status, they mentioned in the, in the documents that uh, my film on Islam or my activities on Islam can provoke Muslims and they can burn our embassies and we don't want that. So we revoke your status and we want you to leave the country. In conclusion, what I want to say is I'm really very much angry with Islam, but there is a little bit difference in my anger of 2003 and now. Before I was completely angry, I just wanted to ruin it. But since I embraced the Christianity, I have a little bit change in my character. Because the first thing my pastors taught me, Imran, forgive. I said, no, Pastor, it's not easy. It's easy for you to say. But how can I forgive to those people who have ruined my wife? He said, no, Imran. If you cannot forgive, you're not a Christian. They used to put their hand on my head like this, calm, calm. I said, I, I used to think by my, uh, in my heart alone, how can I forgive to, to those people who have actually have ruined my life and um, who have actually destroyed my future. But uh, slowly by slowly going to the church and uh, listening the word of Bible, that if we don't uh, love to those who have uh, tortured us, so we are not Christians. Very few people have gone through what he's gone through, and I'm excited to see what God has for him. Now I'm a very soft heart man because I'm a Christian. I have been baptized and once I was baptized, I promised to God that I will honestly follow you and your orders. I cannot actually be angry or I cannot uh, think bad about others. Now the only two hopes I have is one that I can be reunited with my family and the other is that I can dedicate my life to the way of Christ. I want to educate Muslims about the falseness of Islam. Once they understand the reality of Islam, I want to show them the truth of Christ, the way of salvation. I want them to understand the truth the way I have understood. So those are my missions.
questions or to doubt. I met my wife, she was a Buddhist, she was from Indonesia, we met in Pakistan and um, I fell in love with her and I wanted to marry with her legally and having a family with her. But later I realized that Islam doesn't allow a Muslim to marry with a Buddhist. So it was not possible in any way that uh, we can marry. We decided to live together without uh, being married. I thought there are many couples in the world who live actually together without being married or without having a paper in their hands. So for me, important was to be with her. The references of Quran and Hadith. Mr. Imran Firasat is a Pakistani who converted from Islam to Christianity. Spain granted him asylum in 2004 because as an apostate, his life was at risk. The Spanish authorities are now threatening to deport him to Pakistan under hate speech laws mandated by the European Commission. I was told that I'm Muslim and I have to follow that religion. I followed Islam 26 years of my life before I left it. So uh, honestly, I never, because I love her and she loved me. Problems started when, I, when we had a son. The hospital asked us for the marriage certificate. We couldn't provide that and then they reported to the police and then um, police arrived to our home. They come in a huge group and they just torture you. And, uh, so no one can actually blame who was actually uh, the person who tortured you. They took us to police station. We were detained there for several days. And uh, there actually, uh, um, I was very sad that um, my own Pakistanis, my patriots, they... I was not a rebel. I was not an angry man, but Islam made me an angry man. Islam made me do this all, what I'm doing today. I was happy in my country. I simply wanted to live with my wife there, but Islam made me leave my country. Islam made me lose my family. And because of Islam, actually, I simply decided to expose Islam in, edu in an educated way, give understood actually what Islam is. We are forced to pray, to read Quran, and uh, to, to recite everything in Arabic. So actually, we do not understand what we are speaking, what, how, the way we are uh, praying to God. We don't understand anything of that. So, you know, there is no connection with God. There is no relation with God. We just do it because we are forced to do it. In Islam, it's not allowed to ask questions or to doubt. They just, simply, they just say that uh, if you ask questions or if you're doubting about your faith, that is blasphemy. So we all are afraid there to ask questions.